So there's the, the, the Mandalorian LED light cube thing, which is, you know, the future of, of some sort of cinema. I'm trying to do kind of the, the cheap version with just projecting on a wall and feeding that with like Blender's real-time viewport. And so just anybody, something anybody with like a projector could do. Bazing Zang and we is back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Game Day. We are Kit Bash 3D coming live from Los Angeles, California as part of the Lightbox Expo. And now let's go to Ian. We got Ian Hubert on the line. Ian, what is up, dude? Hey, good morning. How's it going? <laughs> good, good morning. You're coming to us from uh, Washington State, right? Yeah, very, very, very smoky out right now. I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's smoky here as well, but uh, it sounds like up there it's, it's been going. It's been good. No. Well, well, we've got, uh, this is a, an inside look into your secret lab future proof up there, huh? Yes, you can see, you can see a bit of the, the wall here. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful wall. Yeah. We've got the, the neon sign, but uh, I'd have to, to say some keywords that would mess with anybody listening to this on, on speakers. Um, I don't even know how to tell you. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, Google, I have to say that, and then all the little things light up. Um, <laughs> uh, well, super cool. Tell us, tell us about uh, what you're going to be showing us today. We know there's a whole lot of people, us included, that are very excited about this. Okay, so so there's the the, the Mandalorian LED light cube thing, which is you know the future of of some sort of cinema, and uh, everybody's been very excited about that. I'm very excited about that, but it also involves. I have no idea how many thousands of dollars worth of, of uh, you know, LED panels and stuff like that. And so I'm trying to do kind of the, the cheap version with just projecting on a wall and feeding that with like Blender's real-time viewport. And so just anybody, something anybody with like a projector could do. And so we're going to see, we're going to see how, how it goes. It comes with a bunch of, of tricky things. We're going to see if we can kind of work with them today. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the plan. I love that. This is the DIY virtual production. Yeah, it, totally. And, and if y'all if y'all don't know Ian's uh, work or his Patreon, um, check him out while we're diving in here. Uh, to to me, you're kind of the the Willy Wonka. We're always waiting to see you know what what next thing you're gonna drop out of your secret lab there. So uh, we're, this is this is a, a really awesome, uh, exciting way to to get to see what you're doing. So thank you for being here. Let's uh, oh, let's see what you, you got. All right. Um, so our, you can all see my monitor now. All right, yeah. so on the left, I have, um, I've got Blender here. And on the right, all, I'm gonna be shuffling all these around the whole time. On the right, this is a feed from my camera coming in, which is showing uh, the monitor, my other monitor. So now you can see it does this cool nested into infinity effect, which is very exciting. Um, oh, shrink that down. And so the goal here is basically to Set up, set this up so the background, so this projection is is a uh, is a good background for somebody standing in the phone booth. So I'm gonna quickly um, first. Here's here's my friend Sean. Hey Sean. We should be in it right now. This is a this is the camera, and Hello. Sean is gonna be uh, be the the actor today. And so I'm gonna zoom in real quick on the camera. Hopefully I won't be running around all all the time, but uh, just kind of setting this up. Here we go. Cool. Hello, Switch. I don't know if anyone can hear me. Nobody, nobody. I'll be your voice, John. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, all right. And so in this, uh, this remote program, which I didn't even know existed before last night, it actually lets you control all the focus and everything from right in here in the app. So I'm controlling the camera, which is kind of nifty. So I'm focusing on him. And now anything I do in, uh, in the Blender viewport should should be behind him. But before we get into that, I want to show you what this is, what this is part of. Um, I've been working on a thing called the, uh, called the Hyper Bowl, which is just kind of, it's this, it's this over the top sport of the, sport of the future. It's, um, it's everything kind of just stuck together. It's reminiscent of like all of those random, you know, super sports and like, I don't know, it's if Quidditch meant monster trucks or something. Um, uh, like in Obviously, you know, it's, yes, yes. Uh, it's got exposed jet engines, and so everybody says that it, this is pod racing, um, which is fair. Um, so I'm going to play this real quick. We'll see what sort of frame rate you get. I don't think you can get the audio, but that's okay because the audio isn't even done yet. So here we go. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, you're getting a couple frames per second. <laughs> this is actually the best way to experience this video. <laughs> <laughs> and this was done in Blender? Yeah, yeah, this is this is Blender. It's a mix of, of the real-time EV renders and also um, Cycles path tracing renders. There's people surfing. Uh-huh. This looks this is, so using cool. There's a bunch of different combinations of, of mocap and hand animated and IK constraints. And I've been I've always tried to do everything I could to avoid having um, real people or like CG people in my scenes. I always use green screen because the Uncanny yeah. Valley is a, a treacherous domain. We were just we we're just talking about that, like the environment stuff in virtual production seems to be the thing because now now we can actually put real people in. And you, um, as you've been showing little little tidbits of things like this or on on Instagram, you've been showing how you've been taking real people um, and putting them into these full CG environments from home, which is just so mind blowing. I think that's absolutely the next step. Yeah, so so this is I accidentally overshot and went straight into these are these are photo scans I've been doing over the over the summer and I've got like 15 different characters that now I can like control with mocap and all of that. But I want to kind of bring it full circle now and have um, I didn't even realize making this that's like, oh, I'm making a completely animated short, um, which is I think is the first time I've ever I've ever done that. So I want to throw just one bit of live action in there. And this is going to be. Um, uh, Sean is going to be on the phone booth, and he's going to look over towards the the Hyper Bowl Stadium as like an explosion comes out the top, um, and so that will be kind of is like oh the Hyper Bowl up to its usual usual shenanigans. So we're going to see if we can come <laughs> up with come up with that background. One one question that. one yeah. question in the chat just to clarify what you just said. So you have photo scans of real people that you've then now rigged that you can match them up to a mocap suit and have those people in their full wardrobe do anything you need there. Yeah, um, here, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you because I'm actually really, really stoked about, like that's, that's cooler than maybe what we're even talking about today. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been tricky, basically you have to set, if you're, um, if you're doing a photo scan of people, you have to set up their, their hands on stands or something to keep it stationary, otherwise all of their fingers are gonna blur into oblivion. Um, eh, I don't know if I can find it. Yeah, um, no, I, th I know you, I threw you on the spot here, but the, the, <laughs> the chat was, was, was saying, hey, so all of your characters are, are real people motion captured, which is, is correct, right? All, all of your yeah. people are people. Yeah, yeah, they're all, I mean, we've got, it's been hard to do in the, in the pandemic, so basically all, my entire library is just kind of the same four people over and over and over in different costumes, but it's been, it's been a fun, I've been learning a ton about rigging and all of that, which I'd always, which I'd always kind of avoided. So, awesome. But and today we're going to start to match in the live action, which I think is is super cool because I I think you're right. The LED volume, the the Mandalorian style thing, looks so cool, but it also feels a little unobtainable. Of like, yeah. how am I going to buy two hundred you know LED four K screens? Mm -hmm. So what what kind of projector are you using for this? This is this is it's a good one, and I almost don't want to say because I don't want it to make it seem as if you need like a crazy good projector. But it's a it's a Vava 4K laser projector, um, which has what's cool about the laser projector is that it actually is like the blacks are really black. Um, normally, if you turn on a projector, it's projecting a big gray rectangle, and the video is in that. But even if you're projecting black, it's still a giant light source. Whereas this, um, if you turn, if it's projecting black, you almost can't even tell it's on, which is cool. Um, Super the, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll stop derailing you. We know you've got. We know you've got a demo here for us. We just. We got so uh, many no, questions. No. We got so many questions. Um, the big. The biggest issue with with this and with you know rear projection or you know projection type technology like this is the black level of of the background. Um, you can have a foreground person that's that's really high contrast, but then you can't have any blacks that are darker than just the ambient value of, of the screen, if that makes sense. And right here, the, the difficulty that we're running into is that like this entire space is, is bright white. The ceilings, the floor, the walls, and so the projection is bouncing you know, from, from the screen onto the walls, back onto the screen, limiting, limiting that black level. Um, and so we set up some curtains there trying to, trying to kick out some of it, but... Um, yeah, it's. I think we got it okay, but there's stuff you can do to work with that. 
um, mostly in terms of how you design your CG scene. And so we're going to actually design the scene a little bit to, to try to hide any, any limitations that, that we have. So let me, let me get this started. Um, I already lined this up because that took a minute and it is not the, the interesting bit particularly. Um, I'm going to shift click on the corner here and that pops a new floating viewport out. I'm just going to drag it over onto my other monitor, full screen it, and uh, zoom in here. And uh, if I go into rendered mode, there we go. Um, and now anything I do, I do in this scene, you know, is going to happen over there on, on the screen, which is, which is fun. I set up this uh, fake phone booth here that lines up with the real one already. And that way, if I, um, here, I already built a tiny little room, but that way the shadows can actually be cast by the, uh, the phone booth and kind of helps place it, place it in the scene a little bit. But um, it's making my brain oh, okay. <laughs> Sean's listening to the feed, it's so I'm, here. <laughs> I'm hearing a little delay of what I'm talking about. And uh, turns out my brain couldn't do that without <laughs> it. Um, OK, so first, I'm just going to try to I'm going to try to just um, lay some stuff in really quick. Here, let me let me raise the. Uh, so we've got the sky right here, and this is kind of just a, a ground object. I think I want us to be looking over like a, a bit of water, and then we'll be looking out at like a distant city skyline, as if he's like kind of in a, in a grungy harbor or something, something like that. Um, so let's see, we'll have like some buildings here. I want to make sure we can really see the, the Hyper Bowl arena. So maybe that'll be, and I don't even know what that'll look like yet, because we're going to be bringing in the kit bash parts. Um, yeah, this will be this will be the Hyper Bowl Stadium, and we've got a couple other little buildings here. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, let's make the sky. We'll probably put it in an actual sky color at some point, but um, interesting. Super cool how you're doing just a conceptual block in very fast with just a little bit of geometry so you can understand what the, the skyline might be like, right? Yeah, yeah. I just, um, the positive and negative space of, for the composition, like obviously right here in the phone booth and Sean um, is, is defined, but I'm trying to figure out where, where everything else could be. And honestly, this is, this is a tighter field of view than, than I expected here. I can hide you guys. <laughs> You're in the phone booth now. All right, here we go. <laughs> Push you down. Down there, you're hidden. Um, okay, so first, first thing, uh, in a in a situation like this, I really like to put as many live action bits as possible in there. And um, Sean, you can actually, I can give you also if you want to. Hey, I like it actually. Um, here, let's put you Down back in time. Um, all right, so you're going to be in a in a future city, uh, actually. Can you try turning on that panel light to something kind of magenta and uh, angling it so it's hitting a bit of the phone booth, but not the back wall? Um, we're adding another light here because as many, as many lights as you can have existing in both the practical and the digital space, kind of like overlapping, the more, uh, the more stuff's going to work out. And so like right here, I have this other light, which isn't shining on anything because the city is all the way back here. But if we had a plane going... Um, I think it would be casting on there. Anyways, okay. So yeah, let's set up some, some video elements really quick just to kind of start selling this. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, F3, import images as planes. Going to, uh, I filmed this on the shore of Port Orchard. And it's just this little, um, I just filmed across the, the water on a warm night so there was extra heat shimmer. Because um, when the air is warm, you get all of that great shing, 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 shing. Um, where where is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that works. That works awesome. Um, maybe maybe I think we're getting quite a bit of bleed on the right side there. Um, nice. Yeah, Sean Sean has put a light inside of a book, which is serving as a barn doors um, for controlling the light still. Which I love great. the resourcefulness. I mean, Ridley Scott talks about how how much he did this kind of thing on Blade Runner. You know, he said he did a thousand commercials beforehand, so he learned that you can just like 
use a book to be the the lampshade as 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 you're going through. Just finding the things around you and making it work is so cool. Oh, that's that's great. Um, okay, so here's here's the water, and I'm gonna go through here and um, instead of being a, I'm gonna turn the mix shader into an add shader, and that's going to actually just add the video texture to whatever's behind it. Meaning that now this is effectively like a, a screen blend mode or some sort of added blend mode in um, in like Photoshop or After Effects or, or any compositing program that you're used to. And so we can just stick this down here. Cool, now he's kind of in a, in a little harbor area. In fact, let's add, I wanna add a little bit of, of layering. I wanna add like another foreground piece kind of in the in the foreground <laughs> um, another thing because again we, we are working I'm just trying to establish a really basic composition right now we can't see any any depth and uh, oh wow I had this cropped off and so there was actually more there on the left than I knew that's that's nice um, I'm gonna add a little bit of haze here into the scene and I'm gonna do that just with a uh, let's see a cube with a, uh, kind of put an emission shader into the volume. So just the air itself is glowing just a little bit. And I'm doing this all in Eevee, and all of Eevee, it's not a path tracer. It's just, I, I don't know actually what to call it. We want it very faint, a, a raster something. Um, okay, now this is very dim, but you can see it's creating just kind of like a, let me turn this up so we can see what we're working with a little. Yeah, we just got this cube of, a cube of haze. So I'm going to angle it so that it's like thicker down towards the horizon and fades off the higher we get. If I um, ooh, okay, and I can maybe tint it just a little, a little orange, ugly, ugly orange. That's that's looking good. Um, I am going to see. Let's see if I make this display as a wireframe. Good, and I'm going to put it in a new collection here, uh, so I don't accidentally click on it every single time I try to click anything. I'm clicking the haze object. And I can do that by turning on a selection toggle and just, there we go. Now I can just click right on that. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of like a, a pier here. This is where all the fishermen hang out. This is uh, some sort of big old, maybe it's a bank. It's a waterfront bank. A little further back. So again, just trying to dial it in really quick with some some silhouettes and stuff, and then we'll uh, we'll go in with our actual assets and and fill all of this fill all of this in. So I'm I'm pretty excited. Um, let me add some water, just a water surface. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, if I turn on the specular on that, it's going to be just the nice clean silhouettes. I I dig this, I think. So I'm gonna use up this this new space over here that I hadn't realized that that I had. It's um it's wild because like this view right here is my other monitor being projected, refilmed, and then you know brought back into the right side. And I'm using it basically as just like another viewport for Blender, which is like <laughs> it's a little bit it melts your brain just just a tad. <laughs> um okay so i'm gonna make this just very definitively like the the hyper bowl arena uh and i'm gonna do that by adding the word hyper bowl <laughs> okay and uh, change the font to something hyperbolic <laughs> This, this whole thing is a joke. I used to say, uh, instead of hyperbole, I'd say hyperbole, um, and, which is an understandable mistake, but this is kind so, of like, what so if the hyperbole was a Super Bowl type sport? Is this a joke taken way too far to the point where it needed to become <laughs> a 60 minute full CG animated <laughs> film? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, setting the fill to none and turning up the, this is like a, this is just the, the quickest way I know of, of doing a neon sign. I'm just giving it a, a beveled outline and turning the it to an emission texture. And then if I make that blue, ideally now if I stick this back here. Oh yeah, there we there we go. Nice. So I can stick that on top nice. of the hyperbole arena. 
<laughs> okay, so now let's let's see if we can actually kind of yeah, like it. Um, fill fill this in with uh, some actual assets, which means, of course, we're gonna bring in our our kit bash stuff here. Here, let me make a new new composition. Um, oh, okay, no, nope, I won't yet. Yeah. Append uh, going to the kit bashery, and I think I'm using the sci-fi industrial. And I've got a collection here of specifically the bits, the ones I like. Which honestly was arbitrary because I, I liked all of them, but <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't need all of them. All right, and it's gonna think about the textures here for, for a second. You're getting so much love in the chat. I just gotta, I gotta tell you, people are, are, are going nuts saying that. They, they love your work, that you're an inspiration to them. Um, they're commenting on the fact that Banks and I just have our jaw on the floor, um, <laughs> which is what? quite true. Blender master at work. I could listen to him for hours. So, uh, Oh, that's, that's, very, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I have, I've been stressing about this, honestly. I never do stuff live because, like, usually... I've, I've found where, where I'm at right now is like the more time I put into something, the, the better it turns out, which means the like, all right, let's bash out something really quick is, is something I, I haven't done that, that much of. So this is actually kind of a, kind of a fun challenge. Um, well, okay, we we so. greatly appreciate you, you diving in here and, and taking the risk with us. You know, that's, that's something that's sort of uh, continual on this show is is can we all be people with the courage to take risks and I, I think you're setting a, a monster example here oh well thank you thank you so much um okay so wait this one is it just okay uh i'm gonna put all of these into a a new composition here called kit bashery and i'm just gonna try to set these up real quick so that they they match our silhouette somewhat and i'm gonna lay in the big pieces first i like i like this one um and this is the part where sometimes you get happy accidents and sometimes you you don't and so <laughs> i'm gonna we're gonna try to line things up and so so that we do and so i really am gonna lean heavily on the silhouette which means I might bring in a background sky really quick. Um, textures, clouds, dramatic skies. Um, I got this from the, the Fogo Bash website, which is nice. It's fun to take your own skies, but sometimes also it's nice to just have a folder of, of skies. Um, yeah, one could be good. Setting it to emit. And what I like is... Um, with stuff like this here, let's stick it way in the background here, scale it up. If you, um, I'm gonna solo this, go into material view, and if you just like move the top like this and look close, because it's basically simulating the parallax of a real sky. And so um, I think this isn't even worth it because you can see in the video, it isn't high contrast enough to really even like demonstrate that it's moving. But if we go control H, hook to new object, and animate this object moving, we're going to be getting that parallax right there in the in the sky. So, wow. Huh. Um, okay, so we'll just start like this. Insert a keyframe, and I'm going to make. We'll just keep it 250 frames long. Do another one right there. With those, I'm going to hit Shift E, linear extrapolation, and so now we'll just have the the sky moving through the course of the thing. Um, in the shader editor here, I'm just gonna put down the uh, the RGB curves. Try darkening it just to just oh ah! just a little bit. Got multiple points going. Oh yeah, that that's that's good. That's nice and that's nice and eerie. Um, you can see right now we're we're we've got that spill going on and that's that's kind of tricky and one of the ways to to avoid that is um well there, there's a bunch of ways the first thing i was going to do um i was actually trying to build a train car last night where you're looking through a window and that that glass there was going to be kind of justifying like the the lack of perfect contrast because it was going to be a, a layer of kind of um 
of grunge. But if I have the environment being brighter, then the white spill doesn't matter as much. And so maybe I should kind of lean into that a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, okay, so we've got, we've got a sky going. I'm going to jump back into layering around these, these cool bits here. Juggernaut says, is Tipesh moving into an Iron Chef arena soon? I believe we have a master chef at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, Jake Everly says, my, my jaw's on the floor now. We could not agree more. <laughs> 28 Spoon 11 says, my PC is looking at me nervously as I watch this. <laughs> oh, and and that's that's Jake Everly VO, who is the voice of David Levy's piece, who also did the sound that we saw coming into this. Give give Jake a what's up, man. He's really? you're, you're, you're the guy. Thanks for hanging with us. Um, and there's I mean yeah, two spoon eleven says I feel like I've leveled up at least five times watching Ian work. Um, Juros Bro says that is his effect. Um, and then Araya says, yeah, just watching this film fills my mind with motivation. And some people here have been asking where they, where they can find tutorials like this. And Ian has an amazing Patreon, um, and future proof workshop is his, uh, learning platform mm -hmm. or education platform. Yeah. So check, oh, check out. Yes. His... Thanks for the, thanks for the shout out. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, guys, do do yourselves a favor and, uh, and yeah. go check that out. Check out Future Proof Workshop. This is this is a little taste of it, but if you want if you want to dive deep into this stuff and see more of Ian's amazing work, Future Proof Workshop is the place to go. So oh, what, what are you what are you doing here? Uh, right now, I'm just trying to lay buildings in wherever we had that that silhouette object, and so I think right now I've got to fill in the. Uh, I want to do something wacky with the Hyperball Arena. Ooh, in fact, let's just kind of match the shape I already had going. Um, I'm using Alt-D instead of Shift-D, which means it's another instance of the same geometry, which makes it a lot easier on the on the RAM. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I like this. Um, that said, I think I have a bunch of buildings down here. Yeah, I'm chugging just a little bit. Um, I think I have a bunch of buildings I'm not really taking advantage of, so I might clean up just a, just a bit. And also, do you know what I should do? Oh, I went into edit mode. I should save. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 22 minutes in, uh, this, is, this is quite remarkable. You should save this. <laughs> OK, uh, if I drag <laughs> this over. OK, this, it's, it's, the haze is carrying a lot of it. It's kind of separating this all, this all out here. Um, I'm going to bring in another one of these uh, these video um, video textures. In fact, I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Yeah, and this one is just um, let's see, Universal Twinkle. This is just a random hillside on a summer day, uh, but you get all of this great band. You see the lights are just shimmering just just a little bit. The Universal. Universal twinkle. So I'm gonna check uh, cyclic here, and yeah, there we go. Turn this into an add shader, and if I just lay this, um, where'd it go? There we go. If I lay this in front of some of these buildings here, I, I'm having trouble working in like this very tiny little space, and so I'm <laughs> taking a while to kind of line well, stuff up. I want to right. point that out. So, so Ian's got essentially two screens worth of stuff jam packed onto one for our viewing pleasure, um, so that he could be screen sharing and showing us what he's doing. So, uh, he is he's working with very limited parameters. He's working with one eye here. <laughs> Ooh, but this is this is working okay. Just laying in this one this one little bit. And if you want to um, mix it up a little bit here, let's add let's add something to over here too. You can like um, I'm gonna duplicate it and go into a solo view. And you can just like, you know, use a knife tool, cut it up into bits, and just drag these pieces around. And uh, just stick them, stick them wherever you like. And so here, let's, let's put some of these over here on the hyperbole. I think I'm gonna do one more. Um, a lot of times when you first import a video texture, it, it chugs a little bit. 
uh, until it gets loaded into RAM, and then the uh, the frame rate speeds up, which is which is cool. So I can take that. I can maybe duplicate that same bit, put it down here. And we're, uh, we're getting a couple of questions for people who just jumped in. So if if you're just joining us, um, what what you're looking at on screen is Ian has two windows up. On the left, you'll see Blender, where he's building an environment in real time. On the right is the view from his actual camera in the room. And he's filming his friend in a phone booth that's real with a projector that's projecting what he's building in Blender in real time behind him. This is his DIY virtual production setup from his home studio um, called Future Proof, which is the Secret Lab Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory in uh, Washington <laughs> State. Okay, I think this is a decent for a, a hyperbole stadium here. Ideally, I think hmm, hmm, we might want to play with this top silhouette to kind of add some crazy stuff coming out. In fact, let's let's take our haze object, which we can no longer click on uh, because we turn that off. Let me click on the haze. Let's see. Oh. Can I not click on the haze? There we go. I'm going to put it just there, up there in the Hyperbowl Stadium. In fact, make it a new material, and we'll make that kind of blue. Hyperbowl is blue. Cool. All right, turn off selectability for, for that. And uh, let's add. So I like if we, um, here, I'm going to zoom in here. Woo, we can move all around. Um, I like, so when we, because we've been using these, uh, these little lights, um, everything actually now glimmers now. The water reflects, it's, uh, it all just has life to it. And I, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, in fact, let's, let's keep going along that vein. I've got some, some steam elements. And um, where, where do I keep, where do I keep those? <laughs> normally, normally I always know. But as soon as it's like, quick, where do you keep your assets? It's like, oh no, is it in the, the video textures or the assets folder or the, uh, it's probably under Steam. Which, which um, one of these levers pulls the Steam? <laughs> steam elements, slow diagonal. <laughs> it's in here some. Oh no, I lost it. Oh no, I didn't. It's in the haze. It appeared in the haze folder, which is un uh, unselectable. So that's... Wait, it's uh, in the computer? It's <laughs> the steam is in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just adding this to be an ad shader again. And, uh, and now we can kind of get, we can get all Blade Runner-y. Um, let me go back to our, our view here. In fact, to be smart, we should put this into its own new collection called Steam. And in a second, I might make that one un unselectable also. OK, so if I hit play here, it'll kind of play slow at first. And then once it loops, it should speed up a little bit. OK, yeah, that's, that's working pretty good. And I'm going to try to use this with the haze to kind of help define some of these, these silhouettes down here. And that's looking pretty intense. So maybe just bring it way down. Yeah. So if, um, if we offset the timing of all these steam elements, that would obviously add less repetition. But I feel like uh, that also creates a new instance of the video texture in the, in the RAM. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe once it's loaded, you can offset it all day. Um, but I kind of feel as if uh, the more offset timing of the video you have, the more it's kind of, you know, I think that makes sense. Um, there we go. Now we, got some, now we got some steam going on here. So, all right, what else can we do to, this is all deep background right now, which I think is kind of making it feel a little bit, a little bit flat. Like we have a very obvious foreground and a very obvious background. And I think I want to add something, some sort of foreground element to, um, to try to blend in a little bit with this with this phone booth. How are you doing over there, Sean? I was, <laughs> was kind of dived into this. I, I'm, I've, 
I, w- I want to throw it out to Sean for being in character this whole time. I, I love it. They're, they're appreciating your dedication to the to the character. To the craft. <laughs> to the craft. <laughs> um, ooh, no, no. First, let's add let's add some little flying let's add some flying um, ships. So I'm going to add a big old uh, spherical empty here, just back back here. In fact, I'm going to add two. And this one, uh, I'm going to add a keyframe to both of them right here. And like 80 frames later, I'm going to ro- this, rotate this one a little bit to the right. Eh, more than that. And this one a little bit to the left. And select both of those and hit Shift-E, linear extrapolation, so they'll just spin forever. And now if I make a little, a little uh, glowing cube here. Let's see. where There it is. You can see it. And make it glow very bright. Woo! Yes. I'm just trying to add a little, a little booth, a little foreground type booth here. here. Let me apply the scale first. Ederson asks, "What's the second window? Not Blender. That is the scene from the actual stage um, of the set that Ian is on. So that's literally, if you if you see Ian's face, that's literally right behind him, where his buddy Sean um, is standing in a practical phone booth." with a projector behind him, projecting in real time the work that Ian is building on his left. And Ian, what software are you using to control the camera? It's, it's not greatly named. What's it called? It's the Imaging Edge Desktop. It's a, it's a Sony program, which again, I didn't even, I was driving everywhere last night trying to see if I could find like a, like a Wi-Fi cable or something, but it turns out you can just use a, a USB-C uh, cable and that, that plugs it straight in. Um, did I hit a wrong button somewhere? And now layers are turned off? Oh no. I hit undo too many times. Okay, there we go. It's all back. <laughs> <laughs> We're also getting the question, um, Screenbound says, uh, you have tutorials, uh, wait, nope, missed it. Uh, Roop Anum, uh, how does he do scenes with a moving camera like the ones on his Instagram? Oh, um, you mean just like, how to animate a camera? So I guess if you were to move the, the practical camera, would you be able to link that up? Or are you, f- when you're doing moving cameras, do you film that separately um, and don't do that in real time? Oh, gotcha, yeah. Um, so usually if, I, if, I'm doing a, if I'm doing a moving camera, um, a lot of times, like this isn't the first time I've ever actually done this technique like this. And what I'm excited about is um, like I can zoom in and just kind of like, you know, I can hand hold it. I can even, what I'm most excited about is I could have like a, like a shallow depth of field and then all of these little glimmering lights in the background would just be like shimmering bokehs in the distance, which could work really good. Um, in theory, I could get a Vive controller, attach it to the camera, have um, that information fed into Blender and be controlling my virtual camera also at the same time, um, which I think would work for parallax, but I'd still have to figure out like some of like if I were trying to have just extend a doorway where I had a projection, I'd have to figure out how to unskew some stuff. But um, I'm very excited. I was hoping that like maybe I would be able to get to that point um, right now, but I don't have a vibe controller. Um, but Mr. Mr. Workman, if you're familiar with his stuff, um, he's got some amazing things. Dream State Joe's opening hyperbole. I'm going to bring in some assets I made the the other day. Um, the Elite, the Elite Two. I just made a bunch of greebles. Do you guys see the word greebles anywhere? Oh. <laughs> Bark twice. Computer. Computer keeps hanging. I think I'm asking it to do quite a bit here. Also, just if your collections have a bunch of assets in them, which. Which mine do? Hmm. Shouldn't be taking this long though. Hmm. hmm. He's got an idea. Hmm. <laughs> it's crazy Fantastic. enough. It might Don't just it. work. Wait, and then it's just I don't know. It's just it's just hanging. This is good television, Sean. Oh wait, no, it's back. We're back. <laughs> Creebles. Excellent. All right, so here's here's the greeble bits. Let's just stick, let's stick this thing up up there. Oh yeah, okay. Um, 
So t- tell tell us what this is, and 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 yeah, this is a greeble bit of of what you made this yesterday. Uh, well, these are just some some random little techie assets that that I made a while ago. Um, and they're just like if you're trying to build a robot or something, and you want to like like build the basic forms, you know, give it a distinct look, but not have to like model every single hinge and everything. This is a little kit that just like you can you can raid and just kind of you know put stuff together, like these pipes right here. And I like modeling these off of images because like uh, I would just never think to add a lot of this these weird angles and shapes that exist. Like this pipe doesn't connect; it's just like a wire. I'm like, what? I love it. I'm taking it. So these are all based off of off of images. But um, let me see here. Let's just stick these back here. I'm gonna take this weird gun thing, and I'm just gonna stick it up in the in the corner right here. So Ian, we've got about three minutes left. We're just gonna let you do your thing. You've been, oh, you've okay. been amazing answering all of our questions, but uh, we're just gonna let you let you rack it here. Oh, three three minutes left. Um, well then, let's get let's get the actual let's get the actual shot here. Um, if we can, let's see. That's that's looking that's looking okay. Um, so here, let me let me show you real quick what it actually looks like. I have this rendered on now on both monitors. We've got this little kind of foreground area where I'm just trying to keep the blacks really black to kind of like match this. You can see that black level is like very dark, and this one's kind of. I think honestly the magenta is is throwing us a bit. If I uh Ooh. Yeah, I'm trying to match this digital magenta to the one in real life and it helps it helps a tad. Um but we still have I don't know, not the best black levels. But that's the thing to work on. Honestly, if I were to go through and uh not have white everywhere else, we'd be getting a lot better contrast here. But let's see, do I have a memory card in here? No, I don't. Um, all right, Sean, this is going to be the moment. You're talking to your grandmother. She, talking to my grandmother. <laughs> she, she's a good talker. Um, OK, and how close? The, uh, the USB-C cable, or the USB-3 cable that I'm using, is uh, two feet long. So I can only go a foot, two feet from my computer and still stream it. Because normally, normally I'd get really up close to Sean and kind of just have this in the background. But, um, but yeah, let's, let's see here. We'll try to get a little bit handheld. And uh, so you're, he's on the phone. Oh, dragging on the ground. He's on the phone. And then uh, action, yes. And then when I say boom, the hyperbole explodes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Sean, you've always you've always been the best grandson. <laughs> oh. uh, kaboom! Whoa, whoa! Oh, you can see the edge of the viewport. That's embarrassing. Um, uh, we got a, we got a loading bar too. You got loading bar? Oh no! Yes, it's this. <laughs> 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 it's a. Uh, I only did this technology for the first time uh, last night. The, if the USB cable is bumped at all, it detaches the live feed from the camera. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think the big lessons for today that I found is black levels, very important. Um, definitely, if I got more, more like cheap black fabric or did it in a darker room or something, I think that would have helped stuff a lot. There's probably also, um, higher contrast projection surfaces. I'm just projecting it on a textured wall, but if I had some sort of retroreflective screen, I think that would probably have made have made a difference. Um, I'm surprised actually that this isn't reconnecting automatically. I mean, my biggest takeaway here is that in 30 minutes, you built a full CG environment and integrated it with a live action plate in real time. So the Mandalorian, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for, for anyone. This is incredible. Oh, that's, that's good. Well, and that's what's so fun about seeing the way they were able to tweak. Um, that was such an inspiration, seeing how they were able to tweak their lighting and stuff to match the real life um, set. was like, whoa. OK, so here, this is working a little better. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You know what I need to do? Uh, oh, it's already in high contrast, very high contrast. Yeah, and then you can tweak the exposure and all that. Anyways, I guess that's that's probably a good as 
of places. Uh, we're, we're in the sweet spot now where it's like, it's looking like something. And so then, you know, I'm like, oh, just tweak this, just tweak this, just tweak this. And I can do uh-huh. that for hours. And I, uh, honestly, uh, Ian, we, we could watch you do this for hours. Uh, and so, so could the chat. Um, but that we, we do we do have to jump on to, to our, our next bit. But man, this All has right. been so absolutely fantastic. I can't believe how quickly you were able to um, pull this together. And folks out there at home, this is uh, Ian Hubert has shown us a little bit about how you guys can can take virtual production and use some of this amazing new technology that's making shows like The Mandalorian happen um, and bring it into your home and, and do it. Um, if you if you don't already, I'm I'm sure I don't need to tell you this after watching this, but go follow Ian. Um, he's putting out amazing things. Join his Patreon, um, Willy Wonka of of our of our DIY space here. We are uh, so honored to have you here with us, Ian. This is something that we've been wanting to do on this show for a very long time. And Sean, Sean, through the roof. Sean, man. give it up in the chat for Sean, please. They are giving it up. They're giving it up for you, Sean. <laughs> um, Ian. Thank you immensely for spending this time with us. Um, it has been it has been a, a real pleasure to treat for for all of us. Um, we're looking forward to seeing more of you, and hopefully, uh, we can get back and do this again soon. Okay. Good luck. Good luck with the rest of your show. Thank you. Thank you very very much. This was this was a blast. Oh, please in the chat, give it up for Ian, and uh, we'll see you soon, bud.